Okay, well, welcome everyone. This is Dr. Nicholas Hedberg, and in this video, I'll be talking about ferritin and hypothyroidism. I find ferritin to be one of the most overlooked aspects of patients with hypothyroidism. It's not a common test run in conventional medicine when someone has a thyroid problem, yet it tends to be uh, extremely important in many, many cases. So let's jump right in so you can understand this a lot better and its connection with uh, thyroid problems. So what is ferritin? Well, basically, ferritin is how much iron is actually stored in your body. So you have iron that you absorb from the food that you eat, and it's used by your red blood cells to carry oxygen throughout the whole body. But there isn't just iron in the blood and in the red blood cells. It also gets stored in certain places like the liver, and the spleen and your bone marrow and muscles and it's stored there so that when your body needs iron it releases it so your body does that uh, as a reservoir to prevent anemia now iron is the most abundant mineral in the body zinc is number two so it's extremely important that your iron levels are in perfect balance in order for thing everything to work right especially your thyroid now, one key thing to understand is that you may actually have anemia if your blood tests look normal. So you could have a normal CBC, but if your ferritin is really low, you could still be anemic. And this is something that's overlooked quite often. So how do you know if you have low ferritin? Well, there is a simple blood test that can be done. Every commercial lab does the test. And then some of the symptoms that you might notice if your ferritin levels are low, some of the first things you'll notice are fatigue, uh, cold hands and feet. You might have uh, a weakened immune system, so difficulty recovering from infections, or you catch everything around you, like all the colds and flus that are going around. And uh, you might notice hair loss, which is a big one if your ferritin is low. And so those are some of the main signs of, uh, of low ferritin. Now, why would it be low? Well, if the amount of iron that you're losing on a regular basis is more than the amount that you're taking in, then that will create low ferritin. So if you have like a very heavy menstrual cycle, if you're a woman and you bleed very heavily, then that will deplete your body of iron. So your ferritin will drop. If your diet is low in iron, that can cause, of course, low ferritin. Um, if you have gut issues, like if you have problems with digestion and absorption. So, for example, if you're hypothyroid, you'll have lower stomach acid levels. And that will actually inhibit your body's ability to break down and absorb the iron that you eat from your food. Uh, gluten can be another big one because uh, too much gluten for too long can create malabsorption issues. And then, of course, if you're a celiac... Uh, you'll most likely have malabsorption issues as well. Uh, there are genetic factors, uh, but those are some of the big ones that uh, would cause you to have very low ferritin levels. So ferritin is very important for the utilization of T3 in your cells. So remember that T3 is the most active form of thyroid hormone. It's 10 times more active than T4. So if your ferritin is low, you'll also have difficulty converting T4 into the more active T3. The other thing that can happen is when you become anemic, or if you're in the early stages of that because of low ferritin, that's very stressful to the body. So you might have increased reverse T3 levels when ferritin is low. And reverse T3 is basically an inactive form of T3. Now, reverse T3 doesn't have any action other than it will actually bind to T3 receptors and block your normal T3 from binding and doing their normal thing in the cell. So it hits it in multiple ways if your ferritin is low. And so your, your thyroid numbers might actually look normal on a blood test, the TSH, the T4, uh, maybe even the T3. But you still have a lot of hypothyroid symptoms and that's because your ferritin is too low. 
So the best levels are at least at 80 on your blood test, ideally greater than that for healthy thyroid function. You'll also start to see hair loss once it starts to get lower than 80. Uh, sometimes lower than it takes uh, about a ferritin level lower than 50 for you to start to see hair loss. But you'll have a lot of difficulty regrowing your hair if your ferritin levels aren't optimal. Now the current lab range for women is about 15 to 150. So there's this big gap of women that fall into the range. Uh, but if they're falling in between 50 and 80, and there's a lot of people out there like that, and they're struggling with hypothyroidism and getting their, their medication right and getting their symptoms taken care of, then this is a big part of the population that's overlooked uh, because their ferritin hasn't been looked at. Now these will inhibit iron absorption if you're taking calcium supplements or eating a lot of calcium rich foods like too much dairy, eggs, and then phytates, also known as phytic acid. These inhibit iron absorption, nuts, seeds, legumes, cereals, and whole grains. And then oxalates, they're found in some of the big green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale, nuts, if you're drinking a lot of tea, if you're eating a lot of chocolate, uh, certain um, herbs and spices, fruits, wheat bran, and then polyphenols like cocoa, coffee, black tea, herbal tea, green tea, berries, walnuts, and apples. So a lot of these, you can see there's overlap. For example, nuts are in the oxalate and the phytate category. So too many nuts could inhibit the absorption. Now, if the nuts are properly prepared, like if they're soaked overnight and then they're lightly roasted, that helps to eliminate the uh, the phytates and the nuts, for example. And then if you're properly preparing your beans, your legumes, and some of your grains, uh, that neutralizes a lot of these compounds like the phytates that inhibit iron absorption. So it's not that these are bad, these foods, if your iron's low. You just want to be sure you're not eating too many of them all the time. So how do you improve your ferritin? Well, of course, number one, you want to find out why it's low and fix that. But you may need iron supplementation, and you can combine that with vitamin C and some betaine HCL, some hydrochloric acid, or some pancreatic enzymes. Um, that will help to break it down and absorb it. And then, of course, you want to fix your gut issues. That could be digestive problems, absorption, things that we talked about. And then infections like intestinal parasites, some intestinal parasites, certain worms can feed on iron and B vitamins. So you want to get a stool analysis and get checked for those. Dysbiosis, which just means all the bacteria in your gut are out of balance. And that can be from taking too many antibiotics and poor diet and stress. And then food sensitivities, like in addition to gluten, things like uh, dairy and eggs peanuts, soy, things like that. Some of the big ones, you might want to get tested for those or take a look at your diet, make sure you're not eating too much of one food because those can create inflammation and that will inhibit your ability to absorb iron. And then of course you want to get your uh, sex hormones in balance. If you're a cycling female and you have very, very heavy bleeding and that heavy bleeding can be due to hypothyroidism and too much estrogen, not enough progesterone. Uh, so those issues need to be corrected. And then, of course, you can eat more iron-rich foods. Of course, grass-fed beef is going to have the most bioavailable form of iron for absorption. Animal foods, meat is going to be the best. Now, you always want to consult your doctor when you have low ferritin. And that's because low ferritin can indicate a more serious disease because it could mean that you might have internal bleeding. And that's why you're losing all your iron or cancer. So be sure you get a thorough evaluation if you're dealing with a very low ferritin level. If you want to learn more, you can go to my website, drhedberg.com, and uh, read my writings there. Sign up for my free e-course, and you'll learn more about the things that we talked about today, as well as optimizing your thyroid and getting Hashimoto's disease uh, under control. 
take care. This is Dr. Hedberg. Make sure you get your ferritin levels checked and taken care of.